James and Petra are a Jakarta-based couple. He is late for philosophy class, but Mr. Zimmet admits him. Petra, the greatest student in her class, feels let down. Mr. Zimmet challenges his class of 20 with mental activities on their final day at the international school to prepare them for their future. The class discusses thinking experiments. They demonstrate logic, arithmetic, and paradoxes. Zimmet discusses the training and instruction they have obtained throughout the years. He feels they are on the verge of becoming intellectuals in the future. He has one more task for them. He believes that a nuclear war is imminent, so they'll pause it together on how the events will unfold. The pupils all visualize the circumstance. There is a bunker with supplies and amenities that will provide them with refuge for a year. Nevertheless, it can only support 10 people, not 21. The pupils must select who will seek sanctuary inside before the atomic radiation reaches them. Petra, the finest student, first refuses to take part in such a heinous experiment, but Zimmet threatens to downgrade her boyfriend's academic grade if she doesn't comply. Zimmet provides cards with information on the roles that the kids will portray in the activity. Zimmet begins coughing after handing James the card. In the brainstorming exercise, everyone begins to introduce their personalities. Petra is a structural engineer, and James is an organic farmer. Other jobs include singers, musicians, poets, PhDs in chemistry, astronauts, and surgeons. There's also a therapist, a soldier, and a senator. Zimmet shoots the poet right away. After all, he believes it is more compassionate than letting him die from radiation, because he would never get into the bunker anyhow. Petra feels he is playing God, which is unethical. Zimmet is a participant in the exercise, but his role and talents are unknown. Once the students defend their right to enter the bunker, there is a group vote. Those with practical expertise are quickly accepted. The last position was between Zimmet and the opera singer, and Zimmet won. They rearranged the tables in the classroom to accommodate the surviving and the abandoned. There are gunshots heard. Zimmet has shot everyone who did not receive a bunker slot. The gang is taken aback. Petra tells James in a hushed voice that she does not want Zimmet in the bunker. James devises a method in which everyone gathers plants before entering the bunker. Once everyone is separated, he approaches each of them individually and informs them that they will meet in the bunker. Zimmet notices this after a time. They turn off the external keypad and shut the bunker, leaving Zimmet outside. They investigate the bunker and discover an artificial landscape a day bed, and a phototherapy booth, all designed to alleviate sadness. Later, on the bed, James meets Petra and assures her he can go through anything with her. Petra checks on Zimmet after James falls asleep. Outside, Zimmet holds up a piece of paper with the exit code written on it. The gang is unsure whether or not what he wrote is accurate. They will have to wait 364 days to obtain an answer. The gang exists in a bunker and does menial work there. Their lives are unsatisfactory, monotonous, and at times, terrible. Petra feels upset over leaving Zimmet outside and periodically checks on his body to see how it is decaying and being consumed by hungry animals. After a while, the process becomes automatic until the year's end. The crew learns that the exit code was real after spending a year in the bunker. They are confined. They attempt to escape using guns, rams, and other instruments, but it is ineffective. Before their food runs out, they consume one scoop. Even cannibalism is used, but ultimately there is not enough oxygen. Their failure in the exercise is explained by the teacher. Zimmet is the only one who has the code because his card is a bunker builder. They choose to attempt the practice once more. Both the bunker and the end of the world still exist. Zimmet rushes in and takes a pistol while everyone is preoccupied. Petra pays attention. It turns out that the cards that were previously issued include a piece of additional information that affects the vote. James, a homosexual organic farmer, is welcomed. The surgeon who was previously cleared could suddenly be disqualified because they carry the Ebola virus. She chastises Zimmet for inciting terror. The hedge fund manager is welcomed, despite traveling with a bag of precious stones and money. The fact that she is a girl and can bear a kid is an advantage. Despite being sterile, the carpenter is employed because of his expertise. Petra is currently an electrical and structural engineer. The electrician is turned down because of a highly unusual condition. A psychotherapist is not allowed to have kids. The PhD, scientist is chosen because of his superior genetics and extraordinary physical fitness. The real estate agent enters, since he is also a midwife. The others are constrained by serious shortcomings, while possessing some important skills. They accept her, since the wine auctioneer has an IQ of 200. The male housekeeper and the soldier with the immaculate memory are accepted for their physical prowess. Because the others still don't know the escape code, Zimmet removes the poet once more and takes his place. The surgeon is in charge of those who miss the bunker, and they make an unsuccessful attempt to flee the blast. Those that were picked to reside there dash away. Petra gets out of bed and starts looking around. James is with the chemist, as she observes. He is also gay outside of the simulation, it turns out. They maintain their personalities within the thought experiment, in addition to what is on the cards. Petra feels a little let down. The conversation turns to a rather unpleasant subject, how they will cooperate to reproduce. 
The chemist, James, and the carpenter are all removed, because they are sterile. Zimit is coupled with Petra. She drags the professor to the bed right away, since she feels scorned by James. The senator is with the housekeeper, while the midwife is with the soldier. After ten weeks of no pregnancies, Zimit claims that they must change marriages and partners, and that everyone must contribute to the species' existence. The soldier with flawless memory disagrees, claiming that they are using reasoning too far to solve problems. Zimit moves away. He returns a little later with a gun and warns everyone save the soldier to leave the room. The pharmacist is hiding behind a corner. He leaps towards Zimit as everyone else walks away, causing him to drop the pistol. The soldier takes it and threatens him with a revolver. Zimit overpowers the chemist, but he jabs him in the ear with a nearby pencil. Zimit, who is injured, replies by opening the bunker doors and murdering everyone. Their second exercise is equally a flop. James doubts Zimit's motivations for the exercise and why he seemed so bent on punishing them. He mentions the unusual cough he experienced when he allocated the rolls to him and Petra, and he hasn't coughed since. He pretends to depart before bolting for the box containing the cards. The box contains secret compartments, and James and Petra's cards have been tampered with. He calls Zimit's vengeance against him into doubt. Zimit inquires whether he recalls Plato's cave metaphor. In summary, since he was a tiny boy, the guy has spent his whole life tied to a wall. He only sees shadows and hears echoes, thinking that this is how reality truly appears and sounds. He gets unchained one day and discovers that the shadows are generated by bodies, and the echoes are caused by voices. The entire concept of what was real was an illusion. According to Zimit, this metaphor is similar to James. He claims the exercise is intended to confront James about how his privilege has ill-prepared him for the real world, but James is skeptical. Why make him a farmer when he might have been anything more useful, like a florist? Petra insists on performing the exercise a third time. James will be a florist this time. They are on an island in their third exercise, and they are early, so Zimit goes for a short check, and as usual, he steals a rifle for himself and conceals the rest. He senses a noise behind him, but ignores it. Petra follows him outside, hugs him, and says she understands how difficult it has been for him. Petra invites everyone to put their confidence to decide who gets to enter the bunker. Everyone agrees, since she is the most intelligent student. Petra makes and explains all of her decisions. She selects the wine auctioneer with a genius IQ, since she is carrying bottles of wine. Zimit is stunned into silence. After all the mishaps, she chooses the poet, since his second talent is champion poker player, and he carries his cards with him. She sees the autistic harpist as a gift and lets him, because the surgeon who was exposed to Ebola may not have been infected, she is admitted. Despite being mute for three years, the opera singer can keep people interested and calm as they fall asleep. She accepts the scientist, due to his excellent genes, but he is disappointed that he would be alone in the bunker. Petra lets the pastry chef into the bunker once he comes out of the closet. Zimit lowers Petra's grade after she makes a horrible decision. Petra picks James, since just two seats are remaining. There is no way you can justify a florist to Zimit. He threatens her with a bad grade in the class. When he grabs his pistol, it is missing. Petra grabbed it earlier while hugging him. She returns the gun to him. He attempts to fire, but the gun is not loaded. Petra gives him two bullets, so he doesn't have to suffer like the last time. James threatens Zimit with a gun after following him and discovering his hiding place. Except for Zimit, no one knows the exit code. The soldier's flawless memory recalls it from a prior version. He walks away, dejected. Petra wants to offer the soldier the final place, since, according to her rationale, everyone's life is equal. The soldier flatly refuses to take her place. As a result, the sterile carpenter takes the last position. James, who is being honest in this exercise, asks Petra to come. She says she'll take the boat and try to escape the radioactive zone, and the carpenter replies he has the boat's keys. He shoves her inside, changing places with her before the door shuts. The others run to the boat to leave the island. Petra continues the thinking exercise, emphasizing that they had fun, despite the horrible circumstances. They engage in card games while using cash and diamonds. Also, they drink some fine wine and even witness Shakespearean plays and creative poetry. Petra hesitates to say the same thing back when James declares his love for her. Petra crafts harps for harpists and opera singers, and their evenings together are always enchanting. The bunker is relaxing and creative, full of serenity. Naturally, the couples become close. They find that the explosives never detonated when they depart. Petra responds that they will live out the remainder of their brief lives contentedly and joyously, despite Zimit's narration that they would all perish, since none of them possess the technical skills necessary to exist on an island. When the end does come, they will embrace it. Unexpectedly, a rocket hits the sand, but doesn't explode. James is prevented from igniting the rocket by shots from Zimit. He located a tunnel and entered it deep enough to escape the radiation, which let him live out the year. Zimit can't allow him to carry out such a ridiculous deed as eradicating the human species. He makes a threat to shoot James with his final round, but the other survivors block him. The third scenario comes to an end, when James and Petra detonate the bomb. 
Zimmet feels upset and humiliated by the most recent workout when she returns to class. The carpenter was with six women when he exchanged places with Petra. The three other guys he was with all perished. The agent for real estate drowned. The electrician was attacked by fruits from a palm tree, while the housekeeper suffered a barracuda assault. Being infertile does not imply that there is no prospect of having children. Why bother living if you can't enjoy yourself? The pupils are overjoyed with this positive outcome. Everyone leaves when the lesson is over, but Petra stays outside and accuses Zimmet of trying to punish James through the exercise. Petra is exposed as the film's greatest deceiver. She has been having an affair with Zimmet, but she also loves James. Petra counters Zimmet's claim that James is beneath her by saying that intelligence isn't everything. Just observe how miserable you are, Professor. Petra bids Zimmet farewell before departing for a college in a foreign nation. Zimmet eats lunch alone in a classroom. He never stops suggesting ways to run into Petra again in his mind.